So welcome to the Juice, Chris. Hey, Hi. Heidi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are That's, you? I'm excellent. Five minute career chats with the world's best CDs. So we're just gonna start the timer and then we're gonna see how many questions we can get through in five minutes. You ready? Sweet, yeah. Okay, here we go. As you've navigated your career, what challenge have you most often faced and, and had to overcome? I think my own insecurity, and it's gotten much better over the years. Um, uh, I don't sweat things so much anymore. I realize that everything always works out in the end. <laughs> Which of your attributes do you believe have played the greatest role in where your career is today? I think lack of uh, procrastination. Uh, when I started my career, I decided that uh, I, I would uh, not procrastinate, and uh, that meant keeping my desk clean uh, at the end of the day and not having a single email uh, in my inbox uh, at the end of the day, and I've stuck to that. Do you think procrastination, why did you choose that? Do you think procrastination gets in people's way? It totally does, especially for creative people. It's, they waste their days and end up working nights, and, uh, uh, and, and, and they have no life as a result of that. Uh, by not procrastinating, it means I can leave every day by 6 o'clock. Well, have- well done. In your opinion, how big a role does a great portfolio do play in determining the level of success someone will have in his or her career? Uh, I don't think it matters as much as attitude. In my own case, I didn't have a portfolio at all. I went to journalism school because there were no advertising courses available. And uh, I got a job in Edmonton uh, with a letter that just said uh, nine reasons why you should take a chance on a green kid like me. And uh, yeah, so you don't have to have a portfolio if you have a great attitude. And what is a great attitude? What does that look like? I think enthusiasm, uh, curiosity, uh, good basic skills, writing skills in my case, um, and, uh, and an infectious enthusiasm that they just can't say no to. How important are presentation skills? Uh, super important. Um, I think that's a big reason why I succeeded in my career and I was made a creative director when I was 26 and didn't know what I was doing. Wow. So I, I was presenting a lot of bad ads, but just based on enthusiasm uh, uh, and energy I was able to sell them. Later in my career, I learned actually how to do a good ad, and uh, combined with good presentation skills, that's the real uh, sweet spot you want to be in. That's the out of the park home run. Yeah. What skills should an agency founder and owner possess before they are in a position to open an agency? What do you think you need think to know it, how to do? I think you 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 need to have this unshakable uh, uh, idea that that you can do it better than the agency that you're in. I want to show the world that there's a better way to do things and uh, you need to have a real clear set of principles and then uh, stick by them. What conditions should be present to guarantee success? Uh, what conditions should be present to guarantee success? Uh, I think that you need to have some reputation in the industry. I think it really helps. If you're just trying to start an agency from uh, nothing and nobody knows your name, it makes it that much harder. So uh, try to get famous first and then launch your own thing. What was the biggest surprise that you that met you when you started Rethink? Uh, we were surprised at how successful we were so early, uh, and that was a big surprise. Do you find it man- difficult to manage creative people? No, creative people just want opportunity, so that's what my job is to make sure they've always got some great opportunity, uh, something great to work on. Are you competitive? Super competitive. Nice. How com- <laughs> how closely are competitiveness and success related? Uh, very, very much, but you can't be over-focused on your competitors. You have to play your own game. I don't know half the creative directors in Toronto or any of the other agencies or what they're doing. I just focus on r- running my own race. Nice. Are you a goal setter? Totally. Every day I have a list that I try to live by. I had goals when I started my career. Uh, I am goal obsessed and I think agencies need to be that way as well. What was your first goal? Uh, first goal was to get a job. But uh, when I was it was a terrible agency. We wanted to be the number one ranked uh, agency and strategies agency uh, creative report card. We were number 64 at the time, but uh, within three years, we were number one. Wow, I love it. A quantifiable goal with a timeline. Yes. What keeps you up at night? Uh, not much. <laughs> Excellent. What are you the most proud of as you look back on your career? I'm so proud that I had a balanced life, that I was able to achieve all my goals and more and still have uh, strong relationships and go home at the end of the day and travel and have great friendships because that's what really matters. I love that. 
What is your our final question? I think we're coming in under the wire here. What is your challenge to this industry? Uh, be open to all the changes around. Uh, don't be scared. Uh, dive into Twitter and Foursquare and whatever comes down the pike. Stay curious and, uh, and, and just accept that this is the most incredibly exciting time ever in advertising. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. Thank <laughs> you. Two, we got one second left. Thank you very much, Chris. I really appreciate you taking the time. It was an honor. Thank you very much, Heidi. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.